Hello again, viewers. I apologize for being gone for so long. Ligacha Force and I were taking a well-deserved vacation after defeating the Cyber Death Dragon. But we gotta get back in the game now, and what better way to shake the rust off than with some training matches. Now this first one is against Kakeru and Mana, two of the first members of the then-fledgling Gacha Force. And I'll be teaming up with Usagi, who's been with us almost as long. I'm opening with Gatling Gunner here, and another force from the agency's choice. Now we've seen Gatling Gunner in action before, and as such it's no great mystery as to why it makes a list of my favorite Borgs. That might seem a little unfair here at first, but Mana Shield Witch is going to put a quick stop to that. As Gatling Gunner has no close range attacks, uh, shield put on him makes renders him nearly helpless as he can't use his main asset. Unfortunately, he's not hurt by his own grenades, and the shield does not last too long. So I can still put up a bit of a fight, and even manage to take down the shield witch. But still, as long as one's on the field, you can't really do too much. And like always, I'm focusing on mana, just cause healing all my damage would be really annoying. Although Mana's force has certainly improved, now that she's got Angel Rescues and even a Bug Witch. Like, I really don't want to get turned into a Roach, so once again she's my priority target. Now, Mana's down to now, and I probably could have let Karu's Double Ninja live a bit longer, but I just got tired of pestering me. Oh, and there we see Gatling Gunner's one main weakness, aside from its lack of close range attacks. It's the fact that its clip takes so long to reload after you empty it. Still, if you manage to tag somebody, it pretty much can take them down in one strength. All but the most powerful wargs, really. Of course, Acceleration Ninja isn't gonna stand and take it like that. But if he gets caught at the end of a dash, even it'll go down. And Karo's down to his partner. But Sasuke can't stand up to it for long either. We showed them! Nice combo! I'm not talking to you anymore. We've lost. Still, this is no time to rest. So we'll collect our prizes and move on to another match. Ah, just a few crystals. Now this next match is against Sho and Met. Obviously this one won't appear unless Sho has joined you. And I figure I'll complete this little trio by teaming up with Yuji. I'm opening with Vlad in another set of the agency's choice. Now, Vlad is Nakobe's partner, and he's a modified Vampire Knight. And while I don't really like Vampire Knight, the vanilla version, that much, uh, Vlad, for some reason, strikes a chord with me. I think it's because I like Vampire Knight's gimmick of stealing HP from melee attacks. But I just prefer Vlad's animations. They just flow a little better for me. Also, it doesn't hurt that he's a little more powerful. Though, of course, hitting my ally doesn't really help matters in that case. Uh, though getting poisoned is really a bad move. And now my health is draining at double speed. And with Met's Poison Worm having taken so much damage. That's not really a good source of health. And diving right into Sho's Blade Wing Toss caused me to lose flat. And next up is Death Borg Omicron. Hey, come on. Do I really need to say it? Turning enemies into Death Eyes is just too much fun. While it's not quite as powerful as being turned into a Roach, uh, his ability charges much faster and is easier to hit with than Bug Witches. Also, side note, turning an enemy into something else causes any persistent effects they have to disappear, like Arrow Ninja's arrows, for example. Go! 
and still, a pair of Death Eyes are much easier to manage than a Blade Wing and an Arrow Ninja. So just as long as I keep my timing right, this will not be a problem at all. So I hope Yuji doesn't try and copy them while they're Death Eyes. That would just be obnoxious. No, oh, and that's what I get for being conservative. I should have went straight after Bladewing while it was still a Death Eye. Now they've got Power Burst on and I can't change them. Although I managed to take it out, I take way more damage than I should have. And Omicron is not going to be around much longer. Especially when Shows a Dubus Wing decides to close in. And there it goes. Next up is Cyber Girl. And while she was in a previous episode, I didn't really get a chance to show her off as to why I prefer her over her more advanced sisters. And like I said before, uh, the remote guns are fun, but the double beam claw is surprisingly effective. Now you can close in and send an enemy flying with just a single tap of the X button. A lot like that. It's not quite as effective against enemies with really great mobility like Anubis Wing there, but still, it's so satisfying when it does. Unfortunately, Met's Claw Worm makes maneuvering pretty difficult, so I lose Cyber Girl. And next up is Planet Hero. Planet Hero is pretty much the anti show here, but I don't want to get too close while Power Burst is going. Unfortunately, it wears off soon enough. And now I can show him my real power. Although again, claw worms webs are tripping me up a bit. So I'll just get rid of him while show's still loading in. Uh, of course, Met's partner, Shijima, is an arrow ninja, and now I'm stuck helplessly in the air, just getting pelted by Garuda. And while Yuji's walking bomb took care of that, he also destroyed his planet hero. Still, my next Borg is Machine Red, who's basically G-Red, but better. And he's also way more expensive at 900 GF energy. Still, you certainly get what you pay for with high HP, and his Buster Laser, which is on a gradual reload, as opposed to the G-Buster's charge up. Unfortunately, I can't show you his true power of combining, because this is a story mode fight. But really, that's the best way to take down a Borg like Garuda. We showed them! This has been proven from the point of behavioral science! This can't be! They were impressive adversaries! And no prizes from that. But again, moving right along to the next fight. Again, another special training match. Now this one only shows up if both Sho and Orochi have joined you. You're also teamed up with Kakeru automatically. So it's really your first member and your last two. Just kind of a neat little send-off. Let's do our best! Let's fight, here it comes! Yeah, while I did put Revolver Gunman in an earlier agency's choice, Billy gets his own spot for a few reasons. One, on account of those shades, and two, for the fact that he gains ammo so much more quickly. He also has a faster firing and reload rate, which is very nice, especially in a fight like this. And while Blade Wing is pretty dangerous, uh, my room is a pretty cluttered area, so I don't have too much to worry about from the blade toss as long as I stick to the more dense areas. So I want to get rid of Orochi's Akuma Samurai first, as I don't want her to power up. And with that gone, I think I'll still target Hiroshi's Teleport Ninja. That's another annoying Borg for me. And while that blade is certainly dangerous, 
it's not really as bad for me as Anubis Wing or Garuda's Bomb Shot. So I'll let Blade Wing stay around a bit longer. Unfortunately, I get tagged and lose Billy. Sho and Orochi also gain enough charge to use Power Burst against us. Unfortunately, my own Blade Wing comes in. And really, Blade Toss. The strength of Blade Toss is almost enough to put Blade Wing and an HD's Choice Force on its own. I combine that with the ability to Flight Cancel, and it's an incredibly powerful board. Unfortunately, while it doesn't make as good use as Power Burst as some others, being able to rapidly toss your sword like that does have its advantages. And the damage boost is certainly nice. Yeah, well, it seems both Sho and Orochi have decided to focus on me. Not a bad strategy, as I could take out any of the forces with a good Blade Toss. No! Though I don't manage to before losing. And next up is Gatling Tank. And while I do love it so, it's not really in a good position against these specific Borgs. Especially when they get Power Burst up and running. Still, it does manage to last long enough to at least show why it's so great. It may not have as many bullets as Gatling Gunner does, but its reload speed is much quicker. Though it's quickly taken down and Cyber Mars takes its place. Uh, like I said, when Machine Red is basically better G Red, Cyber Mars is basically better Machine Red. It's an extra 50 points, but really the difference between them is close enough that if you can only afford one, just pick the one you like better. They've got pretty much the same moves and uh, abilities. Cyber Mars does a bit more damage, but it's negligible. Like I said, you can really just pick the one you like the look of better. And with that, it's game. We showed them! We did it! That was impressive! Darn! Alright, I think we're sufficiently warmed up. And we can finally start tackling these last few Death Force matches. Now this next one here is the final showdown. I wanted to make a force all heroes and the killer girl, but killer girl is actually too expensive. All right, let's rock. So we're opening up here with the forgotten hero, Jet Hero. Now, Jet Hero is only ever used by show. It doesn't show up in any of the showdown matches with the hero borgs, even though it is a hero board and killer and shadow girl aren't. I'm not even going to try to put any power scopes down, as there's just too many shots, enemy shots flying around to make that anything but bad for me. And I'm focused on the killer girl because she's got the least HP, and such is the most likely the one I'll be able to take down before losing Jet Hero. And that was probably a mistake, as it put me in too vulnerable a position. And with a kick from Star Hero, Jet Hero is down. And next up is Metal Hero. And with a quick metal setup, I'm just really swinging wild trying to hit anything I can. Uh, it looks like the enemy Metal Hero took out Killer Girl for me. Which is good, because Metal Hero was taken out before he could do anything. Uh, Cyber Hero hits the field. And I'm trying to find a decent target. Um, Gold here has been in setup for a while. He's probably coming out of it soon, so I'll focus on him. Though an opportunity presents itself. So I use the Tatsumaki Senpu Kyaku and cancel it into a quick Shinku Hadoken. Um, even though I can tack on some damage, you can't really get any good combos going. There's just too much going on. That was a good shot. But Cyber Hero's down, and Gold Hero has to wait a bit before he can set up. Unfortunately, he manages to take out his counterpart beforehand, which does nothing but help me. 
All that's left is Cyber, Star, and Metal Hero. Yes. Scratch Cyber. And while Metal Hero is still dangerous with his sword attack, uh, just as long as I keep an eye on him and don't stand still, I should be fine. So I'm focusing on Star Hero here. And this is really what it comes down to with Hero Work matches. Uh, they're really hard at first because there's just so much stuff lying around. But if you manage to hold on and take down a few Borgs, uh, they become a lot easier. Now here, I'm definitely not going to take down Star Hero while he's big and I'm in civilian. So I'm just kind of biding time until I can gold set up again. Thankfully, Metal Hero missed, as uh, that probably would have cost me Gold Hero. If I can just... Oh! Once again, Moto Hero takes down his ally for me. Now with that slash, do not get complacent about it. I have seen it turn 180 degrees to catch someone who was standing still. Now that's someone being me. But thanks to Gold Laser, that's game. We showed them! And that's a good place to stop for now. I'll try not to take so long with the rest of the game. Thanks for watching.